Now that I bought a karaoke microphone, I am so ready to be annoying, obnoxious, and way too much. And uh, it was meant to happen. This moment was meant to happen, and it's just inevitable. It just finally got here. I I needed to let out my inner emotions through song because painting was not enough. So <laughs> that's what we're doing now. I hope the echo is not too bad because I have not tried recording with it. But I will admit, it makes me feel really powerful to have a microphone like this, like just holding a microphone. I don't know what is it about it, but it makes me want to talk. I feel like I don't want to stop talking. Um, I'm sorry to everybody that lives around me, but the show must go on. Yeah, back to pretending that we're not struggling. I switch up my painting corner over here because I really needed a window. I tried surviving just with lamps and it's not, mm -mm. especially for recording. I feel like painting was not too bad and I am still relying on a lamp because I do love to paint at night. So it's not really for the comfortableness. It's not really because of comfort. It's 100% because of the videos. I had a hard time trying to take nice pictures and videos with the fake light. I needed the sunlight. The reflection of the ring light, as you can tell, is the bane of my existence because I love the effect. I love the, the outcome, but I hate that you can always tell she's there. Like, can you be a little more invisible, a little less of the main character? So yeah, for now, this is what we're doing. And I am actually loving it because it's right next to my TV. And I, <laughs> I struggle with focusing. I do need to multitask. I shouldn't. And it's not that I'm more effective with it. It's just I feel like I am an iPad baby at this point and I need the TV. So right now, this is the setup that's been working for me. Okay, I don't know if you can tell the situation that has developed behind me, but I finished the painting. And now I am going to kind of analyze it a little bit as I show you how I work on it. Because I tried. I tried talking through it as I was working on it. And I am not a multitasker. I am not able to do more than one thing at a time. And... <laughs> I decided that I would just finish with the painting first and then come with a clear mind and kind of focus on one thing because that's the only way I can do it. Also, I thought I would take the opportunity to briefly talk about the book that I just finished reading. I kind of wanted to do a update video as well as the painting one since it's been so long that I've been here. So uh, let's get started. I'm also kind of whispering because since I'm using this microphone for the first time or second time, but I don't think I've used it in a lengthy video before, I am trying to not get too loud and then blow up your eardrums. So first of all, you're welcome. Second of all, I hope this is not too low, but I'm basically whispering. So kind of experimenting today. About the painting first. This painting is the first of a two-part series, as I like to call them, because it does have a continuation that I will start working on briefly after probably I finish recording this video, because I am finally inspired and um, anybody that's an artist or just anybody that is a creative person in general, you know that when inspiration kits you have to grab that bull by the horns because you don't know when she's coming back but you know that when she hits you hard she hits you hard and yeah i want to take advantage of that so i will be starting that soon now the theme i am not sure if 
is as obvious by just looking at this painting i think my second one will be a little more obvious by just looking at it but the painting's theme is basically tackling a little bit my traumas tiny little bit of backstory i started going to therapy not too long ago but it's been already an amazing experience the change in my life has been oh my god amazing i don't know why i didn't go earlier and i cannot stress enough how how much you should try it out and one of the many amazing conversations i've had with my therapist so far has led to an incredible search of inspiration with my art we were talking about art we were talking about creativity and how you express yourself through it and all that but also we were talking about the topic of trauma and it kind of made me think like huh i haven't really done a lot of art at least consciously where i talk about my traumas and now first i want to clarify that i'm not talking about any insane trauma that i'm like you know triggered just talking about it it's nothing like that but it's just things that i do not want to feel forced i don't want to make art or express things that i just don't really feel like i'm ready to talk about because i feel like i won't do it the right way it's not gonna come off as something i'm really feeling in the moment because I'm not. So I decided to put aside some of my ideas of paintings that I wanted to work um, that I wanted to work on first just because and decided to work on something that I was feeling at the moment. And now to the theme <laughs> that is my fear of the dark. Yeah. I feel like I've been so fear shamed, okay? I understand that a lot of things a lot of comments come from just ignorance and i am not going to be necessarily upset about that like i'm not gonna take offense but it does make me want to close off a little bit when it comes to talking about it because there are things that sound a little more important and a little more like actual traumas quotation marks actual traumas that's how i used to think so i felt like it was so insignificant and so ridiculous that it did not deserve to be talked about and even less something that i wanted people to know about me because it made me feel lame and even though we didn't specifically talk too much about the fear of dark itself but we did talk about how everything is tied up to something else that maybe my fear of dark is not really fear of dark but fear of something else that i relate to the darkness which made me think later and as i was working on my journal which by the way also recommend as much as therapy because oh my god after i finished that session i immediately went to my journal and i started just writing down what felt like rumbling at first about my fear of the dark and when i realized that it started at least consciously which was many many years ago i'm talking about like i was a child and how you know, because I was led to believe my whole life that that was something not only insignificant but almost ridiculous that only children feel, I kind of went at it that way as I was writing, which made me realize as I was going how it wasn't just a fear of the dark and a fear of a monster under my bed, but more of a fear of the unknown, which kind of relates to my fear of losing control and like that you know like not going into detail necessarily but just little by little you start putting those pieces together of the puzzle and it was amazing how i felt after because i really did feel like just by taking the time to let my brain ramble i kind of understood things about myself that i didn't understand in these 25 years that i've been living and that felt pretty amazing and kind of inspiring too because that's what led to this painting. So let me explain the painting itself first. As I said, it's going to be a two-parter. So I'm going to explain the other one a little bit. I will leave most of it for the video where I'm actually working on it. But it does tie to this one because it's basically an expectation versus reality of my fear of the dark slash fear of the night. I love the night. And when I mean I love the night, I mean everything about the night i love the stars the moon the cosmos the every anything that's in space but obviously it's only visible to our naked eye at night 
So, 1 plus 1 equals 2, like I always say. My love for the stars and the astros and the moon equals loving the night, because that's where you can see it. I also love the, the idea of what the night represents in poetry, in writing, in art. It's beautiful. I, I love it so much. And that feeling that I get when it's about to become night and I'm outside and I can see the, the sky getting darker, but you can still see the palm of your hand and the fireflies are starting to come out and I'm inside. The coming of the night feels like hmm. the moment I go outside and I actually see it, I fall in love with it until it's a little too dark and then all i can think of is there's animals outside what if there's a crazy person outside what if there's something dangerous outside what was that noise why can't i see the palm of my hands i get so overwhelmed that the beautiful things that surround me are invisible to me and the things that i love so much that i spend hours reading about that i start marking on my calendar every moon event every star event because i want to go out and see it it becomes completely irrelevant because now in my brain this is a matter of survival i might die right now so i gotta go inside and once i'm inside the night it doesn't feel beautiful anymore it's just oh my day's ended a cycle that i am trying to break now this specific painting it talks about that expectation of when I think about me going outside. That's why the painting, even though it's supposed to be representing the night, it's not really the full night. There's no stars, there's no moon, there's no dark skies yet. It's just the fireflies coming out, that dark sky that still looks slightly blue, and that feeling of this is going to be a peaceful night that's coming to me. So yeah. That is what this one is supposed to be first. Now, that is something that I've been thinking about a lot because I wanted to write a fragment to kind of go with paintings. And I will release it once I finish the second painting because I wanted to go with both of them together, not just this one. But basically, it's talking about how the most beautiful things in life, for me, in this case, the things that come with the night, life gives us for free but because of my anxiety and my fear it costs me so much for me to be able to enjoy something so beautiful that is for free like stargazing or looking at the moon outside it costs me a lot of anxiety my peace my sanity and just feeling unsafe and feeling like something is gonna happen to me and i'm i'm in danger which is very very consuming and if you have any of those feelings in any other kind of scenario you probably relate it's it's a horrible thing you don't want to feel ever. this is what this first painting is representing i hope that you know me digging into these traumas and trying to get them out writing in my journal going to therapy painting about it will help me but even if it doesn't even if it takes more than that because i do believe that there's a solution for every problem and i will never give up trying to work on it i want to get a telescope i want to be all ready and once i invest in a telescope and i wait all this time to go out and see it i am not gonna let my fear of the dark take me back in time besides i won't be alone i'm taking my husband i'm taking my dog anything that i need to kind of push me and feel comfortable as i do it because it's also not a matter of pushing myself to be very uncomfortable and just hope that i never have to repeat this experience again i want to kind of show myself that it doesn't have to be that uncomfortable and it can be exciting so yeah that's what this painting is about and next time I will show you the second part of the painting which is this is the expectation is the reality and not necessarily reality because as i said reality does not need to be as scary as your anxiety wants you to think but it's the reality that i see in my head and hopefully after i'm done i can kind of compare and who knows we'll see what we can get out of it what we can over analyze out of it <laughs> i hope you like this new little segments i'm doing in my video i guess that's what i would call them where i show you how i paint but i also kind of explain and talk about it honestly i feel like this is like a tiny little podcast which i kind of love because i love talking so i'm kind of loving it <laughs> and then before i end it i want to very briefly mention the book that i read 
because I do want to talk about it in length later. I'm probably gonna make a painting inspired of it because that's another thing I want to do. I am making paintings based on my traumas <laughs> and I'm also gonna be making paintings based on the books that I've been reading because I thought why not combine my two loves reading and art painting reading sorry you know what I mean. I read The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris and oh my god this was the first time that I read any medical slash science slash history books and I did not know what to expect at all. The only thing I can tell you, well, no, the first thing I can tell you, I will tell you a lot more. But the first thing I can tell you is that this is not the last. This is just the first of many because it's, it's the definition of making learning fun. It was very, very, very... Um, engaging there was not a single page where i felt like it was feeling a little too much like a history book because i do struggle sometimes when a book feels too much like it's a school book and that's kind of why i've never been too interested in history but more like fictional stories that happen through real historic events so it's like yeah i still learned some facts about the historic event but we're following i don't know the kind of monte cristo you know but no this was amazing in this book we follow a doctor called joseph lister and basically he's the pioneer of so many of the hygiene systems that we still use today but that basically revolutionized medicine we're talking about in the 1800s the times where surgery was still done without any form of anesthetics and people were completely awake as their limbs would be chopped off by a doctor. Yeah, that's how it starts in the book. And he lived through that. And by the end of the book, no spoilers, this is history. It's not a story. But by the end of the book, he revolutionized science so much. I honestly think this one was I have five out of five. It was so fun to read too because some of the facts that she included in this book were just generally so fun. And I will read to you one quote. This one is talking about another doctor, not our dear main character because he could do no wrong in my eyes. But somebody else, it says, his most famous mishap involved an operation during which he worked so rapidly that he took off three of his assistant's fingers and, while switching blades, slashed a spectator's coat. Both the assistant and the patient died later of gangrene, and the unfortunate bystander expired on the spot from fright. It is the only surgery in history said to have had a 300% fatality rate that's what you were dealing with before when it came to surgery it was all about speed and trying to be functional rather than being careful and meticulous so that was a little bit of an update on my reading situation i'm sorry that it was really quick but i will be making a more in-depth video later i will be working on a painting in spite of it and i am so excited to announce that my study with me videos will be making an amazing comeback because not only am i gonna keep doing them but I am going to kind of upgrade a little bit how I've been doing them. I want it to be a little more fun, a little more like we're actually studying together rather than me just reading out loud some information that I found online. So yeah, that'll be coming soon. I hope you have a great day. I hope you like the video and the changes that I've made. And please let me know what you think about it. I would love some feedback, but yeah. Hopefully these changes are here to stay because I, I know this is the first video, but I'm already loving it. Goodbye.